Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Oxygen Not Included here in the Ultimate Base 4.0. In between the episodes I kept on building the new worker base a little bit and I also already started the future nature reserve room and we're basically using the same trick we did here in the ladder shaft for the nature reserve. This time around I'm gonna try it with a manual airlock, this is only using half of the material, it's not that important but if we can get the same outcome why not. I also more or less finished the roofing right here, this is what I want to be my upper portion of the base so I need to make sure that the gases don't escape into vacuum. So it's time to set up some drywall, we're just gonna do wherever we actually need it, since I don't know exactly how this is gonna change. I've also started to clean up the terrain a little bit, and of course we kept on progressing. I also would like to see a bunch more jumbo batteries, however, now slowly and surely we have to be careful with the temperatures. So it's a good thing we are actually moving the base, because right here, of course, we're gonna take care of temperature regulation. There's just one issue, and that is we need a little bit of plastic in order to get ourselves scored. Namely for the steam turbines for instance we need plastic and this is just the most important thing that is requiring plastic for us to progress to the next stage of the game. But yeah you can see over time and by digging up everything we are now losing more and more of the chill we had in the beginning and things are starting to heat up. And yeah, well, you look at that, a perfectly viable gold amalgam tile. Let's go ahead and deconstruct these guys. By now, we also accumulated a whole bunch of oxygen outside the base. And my suggestion would be to take advantage of that because nobody is really breathing that. And all I want to see is a pipe going down and actually joining up with this one here. Mm, let's do it like so. I'm also going to hook this up to a signal switch and even more. A gas pipe element sensor together with a gas vent. And we want a knot gate. We only want the oxygen to go through. So a little knot gate right here together with cabling. I'm always speeding up the construction of the gas pipe element sensor. So I can do the setting and then just forget about the system. By now we've also collected enough carbon dioxide in order to fill up the rocket and the rover's module should also be ready. So all we need to do is launch this baby. Right now we're only occasionally getting the power. We could prevent this from happening. Well, ooh, these doors are open. That is probably not good. Well... <gasps> No, there's a meteor shower. Yeah, this is definitely not good. That is due to the signal switch, probably. And, oh yeah, they're gonna take forever because I haven't powered them quite yet. Maybe we can speed this up, construction here. Just finish those cables, please. At least it's just a slimy meteorite. Yeah, no problem. It's arriving in 1.2 cycles. And wait, going to build. What are you waiting for? This is so weird. Ah, okay. They wait until they can go through the door here. That doesn't make sense. I think we built the wire. Yeah, now they're finally closing quickly. Okay, and the dupes finally accept it is closed. To maybe make this a little nicer looking, we could go with a charcoal wedge and then kind of set it up like this, maybe rotate it around for the other side. And then here we're just gonna do a half circle with the pattern. Yeah, I like that. Wonderful. Another two tiles are done. And there's one more to go. Thank you, Nisbet. Wonderful. Now we can already get rid of these. And we have plenty of time to allow a pip to do the job. Also, I think I want to go with a slight pattern here. So I'm going to change up some of these drywall tiles. And maybe we can do the same thing here for the bedrooms. So we can have like a zigzag pattern here on the top. Yeah, I like that. That's not too shabby. Now I'm thinking about the new room layout here for the worker base. Maybe on the top right we can get away with an enormous great hall. Like this one could stretch all across here. And then we make it this size. Or we even make it this size. What is the maximum size? 128 probably. No, it's even 120. I kind of would like to keep the floors on the same level. Which means this upper room here is only going to have three tiles. But I can also do something like this. Just make the room stretch across two floors. The thing is, in my opinion, a great hall needs to be at least four tiles in height. This way we can also set up a bunch of pictures apart from the ceiling lights. Ah, I see. I made a mistake here. This natural tile here is a little bit too low. Yeah, actually this changes everything because if I can set up a room here and then the next room here, then I have four tiles in height. So this is definitely going to be my great hall and it's going to stretch all the way. Oh no, that's bad. Well, honestly, it doesn't have to stretch that far. All I need is 24 dupes, right? So 24 mess tables. Say I want to leave a little decorative space over here, maybe a spot for a plant. And then we're going to start with the first six mess tables. I'm then going to leave two spaces free for a statue 
or something else and then another six and so on and so forth and then if we do another six here that should be everything and this would be the size of the great hall including the cabling here which is now in the way or maybe we just need the extra space in the beginning for a fridge and then right here on the right side i would like to see another plant and so this would be the border and we can just go around with the ladders if i do it like this the bottom room could be our exosuit room so all of this right here would be exosuits and here i would make my exit out of the base for now i'm gonna make this room here with normal tiles and not the precious metal tiles and then this piece here will have to move yeah that is unfortunate so I have to replace this and make sure it is completely encased. Anyways, one thing I wanted to do is also provide a little bit of power to my rocket. And I think if we just hook up the solar panels, we should be able to relay it inside of the rocket. Oh, there we go. Meteor showers are incoming. Oh, Ren, how are you doing? Maybe it's time to move back into the base now. And then on the second planetoid, I wonder how about the temperatures? Yeah, this is always going to be a little bit of an issue. Actually, the solar panels have a normal temperature here. Yeah, looks like we're going to have to dig up quite a bit. But at least my solar panels are safe. They're not starting to heat up or anything. Good, it's time to wake up the Somnium Synthesizer. All I need is some power cabling going through here. And then we're just going to power up an auto sweeper. So all my dream channels are currently in this storage bin. And if I set up the auto sweeper. And then hopefully the auto sweeper is only going to feed the channels that actually need to be fed. You can see we accumulated quite a few of them. There are like eight stacks or so in there. Good. There's my pump going for it. Now it's still going in the wrong direction. We can fix that with a pipe. This way we can make sure it is actually flowing into the correct direction. There you go. We're actually going for it somnium synthesizer is in use and let me see all the journals are still in there they are being delivered by the dupes and then the auto sweeper is just inputting them whenever it is required right yeah basically until we use up one journal and then it's just inputting another journal because 25 is the maximum so there's no risk of wasting the journals and that is good now we also have another pump providing the oxygen and therefore these guys here will not have to work quite as hard but we're already down to 84 tons of polluted dirt there's a timer on how much longer we can sustain it. So my suggestion would be to now make it over to the third planetoid and check out what we can do in order to save this colony. Okay, I just noticed we're also lacking another very important resource and that is the fossils. I believe we find that on the third planetoid as well. Let's not waste any more time and get things going. I want to go ahead and add some pickled meal to this refrigerator just because it is going to last for a while. And right now with our configuration, we cannot really utilize the fridge. We want to make an emphasis on the oxygen diffuser as well as the telescope. As soon as we got the 10 kilograms of food in here, I'm going to start the rocket. I should already have a sign made to the crew. There is our food being delivered by oh, multiple dupes apparently. Okay, I'm not going to complain. We have the full amount of food in here. Let's choose a destination for the rocket. We can only really move six tiles. In the future, we're going to move a little bit into each of the directions. Maybe right here, we're going to find another planetoid. But right now, I want to put a rover on the third planetoid. So three tiles over and then three tiles back should be good. And we can still explore a couple of tiles. And then automatically, May should be tagging along. No, she isn't yet. Wait, maybe I have to open up the bunker doors. But there we go. Opening the door and uh, yeah, all the dupes get trapped again for some reason. <laughs> Maybe they're going to fall through once it's open. And no, they, they just wait. Okay, come on, mate. We're ready. Oh, I know what it is. Maybe priorities piloting. No, we activated rocketry for May. I just had to actually launch it or set it to crew. But there we go. We're launching the rocket for the first time in this playthrough. And hopefully it's going to be one of thousands. This of course also gave us an achievement. Launch your first rocket. Now here we are. It's going to take only 0.8 cycles to actually reach this tile. During that we should be producing 120 watts from the solar panels. But then even a little bit of surplus maybe from using the engines. Here we go. Let's have a look at the radiation. Yeah. I think we're going to be pretty safe, at least because of the tasks we have set up here. Also, of course, we can unequip the suit. May should be able to easily breathe in here. 
If we check out the Explorer, we can see our speed is 2.4 tiles per cycle and we have 5 tiles remaining. And look at the food, because we chose pickled meal, it only loses minus 3% a cycle, even though it is unrefrigerated and only in normal atmosphere. There we go, we are approaching the second tile and now we should be able to use the telescope for a bunch of tiles. So May in space should be allowed to do some researching, but I'm gonna put it all the way down to the lowest priority. Since she's idling around here either way, she's gonna be forced to use the telescope there's nothing else to do and now you can see the telescope seems to have priority over the oxygen diffuser and it's only turning on occasionally so maybe the carbon dioxide engine doesn't even produce power because right now we are using it still it is enough to make use of the telescope and we are researching the next few tasks right now this one here and then revealing more and more now what's really nice even in space and on other planetoids we have the maximum aptitude bonus and since we unlocked it quite early in the playthrough i think we're gonna benefit heavily yes may go for it make me proud you can poop on the floor, you can sleep on the floor, all good. Now it looks like we already reached the orbit. I'm gonna allow her to explore a couple more tiles. I mean, we can do all the tiles that are three away from the rocket. And in the meantime, we also deploy the rovers module. But maybe first let's overview the planetoid now that we can. What can we see here? We find some copper, okay. And of course there's plenty of sand and sandstone. So that problem is out of the way. But other than that, not much to see yet. So I'm gonna deploy the rover and let's maybe do that right here. So we have immediate access to the interior of the planetoid uh, right there. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Come on, little rover. First of all, maybe deconstruct the lander module and then we're gonna make our way down. So there's more iron. There is the frozen fossil, a story trait I haven't dealt with yet. We also have patches of algae apparently, but come on, give me something good. Ah, phosphorite, that's also nice. Maybe, um, I didn't check the geysers yet. No, I did, of course. So still no sulfur geyser. Anyways, I think I'm gonna make my way straight down here with the ladderless digging pattern. And then we're gonna make our way over and down. Maybe continue here a little bit, then make our way over. Yeah, the problem is this planetoid is quite hostile, right? There's 218 rats per cycle. And of course, there's no breeze breathable air so we might have to come in with a proper rocket we will not have access to a better engine just yet so it's going to be a tiny rocket but maybe at least we could use the spacefarer module so if I go ahead and research this technology, we should be able to first establish a landing pad and then use a proper rocket in order to have at least something livable that's going to allow us to establish a base. But yeah, first of all, I want to try to utilize this rover to explore most of the planetoid, just reveal the terrain and then maybe already set up a little something. The rover can only build basic parts, but it might help. Here we have May relieving herself. Good job, good job. And continue the research. Ah, okay, nice. This is actually quite a friendly baum here in the center. We even have some oxygen and plenty of algae to get one duplicate by. Also, there's our first oil reservoir. Hmm, slime. And of course, another story trait here, the Gravitas shipping container. But for now, I'm gonna keep going. I wanna make my way over here, I guess. Maybe get a little ladder going. Okay, that should be good. And then get a ladder going down as well. Or maybe we just utilize this part in order to get down quickly. Yeah, that's better. Get all the way down to here. Okay, not too shabby. Then we're gonna make our way back. Actually, we can't break through the abyssalite, so we'll have to utilize this part here that we already broke free. And then maybe if I do this right, we can already make a little liquid lock so we don't lose all of the oxygen there. Then continue over here, see what we can find on the other side. Just to keep you updated, in the meantime, on the second planetoid, Ari is making good progress, just digging everything up and also shipping more of the materials over to the first planetoid. That's what I'm talking about. We can also find lead and fossils. Most of our problems are solved. Even diamonds for really good temp shift plates. Ah, this is really good. Maybe we're just gonna go for the Dracos in order to get the plastic. Of course, we're gonna use some oil to get initial plastic, but I'm not even sure how much oil we're gonna find. Looks like May is is done here researching the tiles yeah very good so we're gonna make our way back over here to the main planetoid and i'm also gonna undo the pickled meal here so it gets back into the main storage for what it's worth okay nice we don't even have to set up an oil well to get the initial oil for the plastic now let's see do we even have no we don't really have cold bombs that is just not enough 
So it's all pretty toasty here. It's not going to be easy to just produce some plastic. Unless, of course, we send it over to the main planetoid where it would be easy. But maybe just for the initial plastic, we can make use of it. Do I already even have unlocked it? No, we still need to unlock the polymer press. Right now, I'm still researching that. And that reminds me, we probably need to activate our system here. Let's go ahead and do that. We need a little bit of juice here in the material study terminal. But my point is, afterwards, we should totally go for the polymer press here. Maybe we're already going to do that in the meantime, while we are collecting the bolts here. Looks like our explorer is going to return in 20 seconds. Let's go, mate. That was a good first mission. And there we go. Yeah, re-entering the atmosphere. Here. let's check that out right here coming back okay wonderful and now i think i want to ground the rocket actually there's nothing really to ground yeah it's not worth it however mate just made an exit here and i want her to first go ahead and equip the suit so let me try that may that is for you and yeah she does it wonderful okay that was the first successful mission. We know a little bit more about space. One of these question marks is certainly another planetoid. But yeah, we're going to focus a little bit on the third planetoid right here because that has all the important ingredients to thrive for our colony. Okay, looking good. It's not really interesting, this planetoid, other than all the materials that we now have access to. So I guess our next goal is to land a duplicant on the planetoid. That duplicant will then go ahead and establish a small base here using algae, maybe a manual generator for now what is the lux doing here right now of course it's bad maybe we have to check the star map here peak light is also 30,000 lux so it's the same as with our other planetoids that means we could go ahead maybe take a little bit of glass with us and establish one or two solar panels then we should have enough iron and copper in order to set up the heavy watt wires and we can go ahead and establish a really good base here. Now, let me see which dupe is going to be the chosen one. It is uh, going to be Lyra. Yeah, she's designated for that job. And so she's now just going to establish a base. Let me go ahead and explore just a tiny bit more. Maybe we get to see something interesting. In the meantime, we unlock the natural gas generator, a petroleum generator as well. And we unlock the oil refinery. Very important for what we are about to do as well. Well, you know, the good thing is we have plenty of iron now and also plenty of fossils here that means we can have quite a large amount of steel in the pipeline but yeah right now i think i want to continue here maybe with some granite that we're gonna pick up from here but first i have to use igneous rock Oh no, of course, we cannot even dig granite, never mind. So this is all impassable terrain for the robot. And I don't want to go down here. Well, in this case, I'm going to utilize the robot in the next episode in order to establish a small base here, wherever we can dig up. And then whenever we're going to send over Lyra, she can directly take over and establish the base. I would say with that out of the way, we're going to wrap it up for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great time and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.